What's up everybody? Today on TK Driven, we're going to change the front sprocket on my 2010 Iron 883. What's going on guys? So I've got some really exciting news. Next week, my dad and I are going on a week-long motorcycle trip. We're going to be in Gatlinburg and take the Blue Ridge Parkway to somewhere up in Pennsylvania. Not sure, we're just going to kind of wing it and see where we end up. But I want to address an issue on my Iron 883 that I've not really ever liked. At interstate speeds, like 70, 75-ish, it's a little buzzy. I wish it had a sixth gear. So I've ordered a sprocket with more teeth. I'm going to increase its final drive, so I'm going to lower the RPMs at the top of the rev range. In today's video, we're going to put that on. I'll do a before and after with the stock sprocket versus the new sprocket. There's no tachometer on an Iron 883, so we'll just have to ride about 70 miles an hour and see how buzzy the engine is and see if we've lowered the RPMs. I'll just give my overall thoughts on it. So let's take the stock sprocket for a ride. I just thought of something else we should test. Let's see how the uh, acceleration is from a stop. So I'm about 5'11", I weigh about 160 pounds, and it's never been any issue at all to accelerate on this bike. And if you're changing the final drive, that could be an issue. So here's second gear right here. That's no problem at all. I'll go from first at this red light here, obviously. Reading online, it sounds like lighter guys about my size don't notice a whole lot of difference after they do this sprocket change I'm about to do. So hopefully I will have the same experience. So here comes first gear. Second gear. Third gear. Fourth gear. Fifth gear. There's 60 miles an hour. It's a little bit buzzy at 60, not as bad as 70 and 75. I think I'll just test at 60 right now. There's nowhere nearby where I can drive quickly to get to 70 without trying to get a ticket. So, there's 65. So, like I said, there's no tachometer from the factory. But the bike, I, I can feel it buzzing in my seat. My hands are a little bit buzzy. It's not terrible, but I would prefer the change I'm about to make to uh, bring my RPMs down a little bit at such high speeds. I found it stretched to do 70, so there's about 72. It's, it's pretty buzzy. Oh yeah, when you change your final drive, your speedometer will be different. So, when we check this again, I'll have to GPS the speedometer until I get a fix. I believe there's a software that you can get and flash the uh, ECU and fix the speedometer. I'll have to look into that. So yeah, let's go back to the garage and put on this new front sprocket. Back in the garage and the bike's cooled down. I'm going to start with taking this cover off. That's a uh, 3 16 Allen. I'm going to try to remove as little as I can. So let's get access behind here and then see what else might need to happen. Well, I struggled with the cover for a while and I can't get it to clear the exhaust and this pedal and the bottom exhaust here. So I'm gonna start with taking this bottom exhaust off, which will give me access to this uh, rear brake and uh, see if I can clear this out. I'd prefer not to remove these bolts and pull this exhaust back, but I may have to do that as well. We'll see here in just a second. And it's held on by two additional bolts that are down here on the bottom and they, they seem to be half inch. It's a little loose for half inch, but I checked it to the next size that's available and even checked the metric. So it must be half inch. I wasn't able to remove it without loosening the exhaust. So I pulled this heat shielding off. And that's 5 sixteenths for these water hose clamps basically. Now I've got this loose. And I've also, there's a half inch bolts up under there, like I said, and half inch bolts up under this side. Got all those out so that this is a little bit loose and this is a little bit loose. I loosened these also. 
And now there's a little bit of play here, so I'm going to pick up on this just slightly and see if we can't get this out. Now it's out, and here's what we're after. There's the front sprocket. This outside ring here keeps the sprocket in place, so we're going to take these Allen head keys out, and then we have to figure out a way. This is a um, reverse thread, so it's not, it's righty-loosey, lefty-tighty. So we'll have to get a way to hold this sprocket and put a really large socket on this guy and break that loose. Got the Allen bolts out. Here's that keeper that keeps the big giant nut on there. The main sprocket nut is an inch and seven eighths. I've got a three quarter drive, inch and seven eighths. My impact is only half, so I've got an adapter I'm running there. And uh, there's a lot of videos and some commentary about how to keep this from spinning as you're trying to take this off. Now remember, these are reverse threads, so it's righty-loosey, lefty-tighty in this case because the sprocket's moving forward, so it would, it would spin itself off if it wasn't reverse threads. So these are reverse, so you're going to be uh, going right to spin it off. Like I said, there's a bunch of videos and some commentary and things I've read about how to stop this from spinning uh, while you're taking it off. But I got a feeling with an impact, I've had some experiences where you don't have to worry about things spinning, so that's the first thing I'm going to try. However, if this doesn't work, I did buy some small C-clamps, and you can put the uh, bolt that holds the uh, cover back on. It would be this one here, this hole. That bolt threads back in, and you can put this C-clamp over that bolt and grab a tooth of the sprocket. There's some potential to damage the tooth of your sprocket here, so I would recommend some caution if you choose to do this. There's a Harley tool they make that you can also buy that's made specifically just to do this. But it's like, whatever, 60 or $70, and this is $2. So if, it, if I end up needing this, we'll see what happens. If you're changing your sprocket out, then there's not as much danger or you don't care about damaging the teeth as much. But if you are trying to just replace it for some reason with the same one, then be very careful with that method. But like I said, I'm going to go ahead and try the uh, impact wrench with nothing being held and see what happens. So let's see, righty-tighty, which is righty-loosey this time. Let's make sure I pull it the right way. Yep, so that should take it off. Let's see what we get. Just like that, it come right off. Thank God for impact wrenches. For the next step, we've got to relieve the tension on the belt to be able to get it off the old sprocket. So I've just got a scissor jack slid up underneath the bike, and I've got the rear tire raised up just maybe half an inch or an inch, just enough to give us some clearance. And then we're going to go ahead and take apart that rear uh, axle assembly there and loosen it up so that we can relieve the tension and get the belt off. There's a horseshoe style retaining clip right here in this groove that keeps this in place. Just take a large flathead screwdriver and pop that guy loose. Set it aside and don't lose it. This rear nut is an inch and a quarter. I'm going to go ahead and put the impact on that and loosen it. We're back to normal threads, righty tighty, lefty loosey, so make sure you're spinning your impact the right way. Now that that's completely loose, take these rubber caps off, and there's, this part is identical on the other side. You'll pull that rubber cap off, and this is the nut you spin to change the tension on that belt. This is a 12 millimeter. You'll probably need like a deep socket or an opening wrench, and uh, you're going to loosen this section, which allows that front tire to move forward. And this is back to normal thread, so righty tighty, lefty loosey. So let's start loosening this. So I've taken it out near the end of the thread, so I'm just going to leave it assembled. Now let's do the same thing on the other side. So it's exactly the same over here. You pull off that black rubber cap, take your 12... Did I say this is a 12 millimeter? I meant it's a half. It's not a 12, it's a half. Now you can see how much slack there is on this belt. So let's work it off. And then you simply pull the uh, 
old sprocket out. Ta-da! Here's our new sprocket. Nice and shiny. Go ahead and slip it back into place. And start working your belt back around. This is a larger diameter sprocket we're putting on, so don't be surprised if your belt is still too tight to put the new one on. You may have to come back here and push your rear tire assembly forward some more by loosening those adjustments or pushing on it physically to get this back on. So I'm going to go try that. There we go. So I've got those, those rear adjusters all the way to the last thread and I pushed the tire forward. And now our belt is back on our new sprocket. Now we simply reverse the process we did for taking it off. Your inch and seven eighths ring is reverse threaded back on, lefty tighty. It's so weird to say that, isn't it? That's how it goes. If your sprocket assembly just starts to spin, you may need to let your jack down a little bit. Put that rear tire back down on the ground. That will give it a little bit of resistance on the sprocket itself, on the belt. It's 50 foot-pounds for this front sprocket nut, and if your retaining plate holes do not line up, you can drive it forward another 30 degrees. They do not recommend that you loosen this at all to make the holes line up. Put your Allen head bolts back in for the retaining plate. Now you want to come back to your tensioning assembly and start to tighten this half inch nut to start to pull this whole assembly backwards to retighten your belt. You want to do the same thing to the other side and you got to make them exactly the same. Harley recommends getting your belt tension between a quarter and five sixteenths deflection with 10 pounds of pressure. I'll show you that here in a second. This model, which is an Iron 883, includes a hash marked viewing window so that you can see the amount of deflection that your belt has. So that's about where we want to be. Now the trick is to get this to be around this too much tension and create the same amount of space on your two rear alignment tools. Take your time, it may take a little bit to get it just right. I've got the belt tension where I want it and I have these two rear adjustments adjustment bolts exactly the same on both sides. So now I'm going to lower it back down and just recheck everything. That looks good. After you get the two tension bolt nuts adjusted, make sure to remember to come back over here and tighten your, your rear axle nut. For this Iron 883, it's 95 to 105 foot-pounds. Reinstall your horseshoe clip. That part's good to go. A good tip after messing with your exhaust is always wipe it off. If you've got fingerprints or oils from your skin or anything on these chrome pipes and you start it up and they start to get hot, you may permanently burn in whatever you left there. So always wipe off exhaust parts on chrome after you've touched them. Let's go test our new sprocket out on the road. Well, so far I can tell you that I can't tell any acceleration problems. It seems to get up and go just like it always did. Right 60, 63-ish. Oh yeah, I forgot to get the GPS out, so my speedometer is going to be a little bit off. I don't have a phone holder. It should be slower, I think. I'll have to look it up. So there's 60 on the speedometer, and uh, there is definitely less RPM. The bike is a little bit less buzzy. Everything feels pretty smooth. Hey, there's one of the new C8 Corvettes. That's the first one I've seen that wasn't at a car show. I just pulled over and looked it up by changing to the sprocket we chose. The speedometer will show slower than we're really going. So that's already good news. So I was registering 
65 and it was less fuzzy, so that means I was really going like maybe 70 or 75. This is so much smoother. There's no doubt that it's smoother. Far less fuzzy. Highly recommend this mod. If you're on the highway a lot and you enjoy your iron, the 883, I definitely recommend this. I'll put a link to the guy that sells them on eBay. There's 70 on the wrong speedometer, so that's usually 75 or 80, and it feels just like it did at 65 before. That's exactly what I wanted to do, guys. I'll run through all the gears here when I make this turn, so you guys can see the acceleration is pretty well normal. So here's first. Second. Third. Just cruising, smooth as silk. This is a perfect mod. Guys, I really appreciate you liking and subscribing. It really helped out this channel. I would go so far as to say that this is what it should have came with from the factory. Maybe Harley was trying to make sure that the bike had enough acceleration for far heavier people than me, but. I got a feeling the majority of owners that tend towards iron 883s in the first place are probably on the smaller side. It's a, it's a small motorcycle in comparison to most of their other models. I think this is the way it should have come from the factory. This is perfect. I can't wait to take it on our trip. You guys look through my videos and find the videos from our trip. I'm going to document everything we do. I'm going to have cameras all over the place. We're going to have a great time, me and my dad, traveling the, the Blue Ridge Parkway. So keep an eye out for those. Second. Third. Fourth. Fifth. Easy cruising. The bike's a little bit quieter. The exhaust is quieter. I really like it. I really like it. Another added benefit is since the RPMs are down, I'll get slightly better gas mileage down, too. That's it for this video, guys. I'm going to head back to the garage and continue getting the bike ready. I'll be changing the uh, air filter out. Watch that video, too, here soon. And then look for all the videos of our travels. Appreciate it, guys. Catch you on the next one.